What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy K Dog here for the first official uh, M21 standard list. Uh, so, I've been posting a lot of the early access events. Uh, that was a ton of fun, and uh, I got a ton of gameplay out of that. And uh, now, just kind of more working on uh, refining some of those lists and continuing to create some new deck lists for you. Uh, this was definitely the one I had the most success and the most fun with. The uh, Simic kind of uh, enchantment creature draw. Uh, that was kind of an engine built around a Satesan Champion, drawing a bunch of uh, cards with enchantments, with things like Lore Scale Kotal that get plus one counters whenever you draw cards, and a Draw Wild that puts out 2-2 cat tokens when you draw your second card each turn. Um, and so I've got kind of refined this into a, now a best of three list, uh, made a couple of changes, uh, of course added a sideboard now. Um, it's mostly the same deck uh, intact, but we'll just kind of uh, quickly go over it again. Uh, so we got uh, Frogify here is probably the uh, biggest change. Uh, it was running Canada's Transformation, which uh, draws you a card but turns your opponent's creature into a base 3-3. Three, three. And uh, Frogify turns into 1-1, one, one, and both cards also eliminate all, uh, make it so that creature loses all abilities. Um, so Frogify is obviously one-sided, whereas the Kendra's Transformation you could potentially do like, you know, on your creature sometimes. Like you could turn your 2-2 cat into a 3-3 if you wanted to. Um, but that's not really that particularly important. Um, but it does draw you a card, which works well with things like Jor-El or the low-scale Kotal. Um, but I think Frogify is just kind of the safer, uh, the safer card in most situations, so we're going to run Fogify instead of the Kenrith Transformation. And giving your opponent a 1 1 base 1 1 instead of a base 3 3 is going to be a better deal for you in a lot of ways. So we're going to run four Fogifies instead of that. We still have the three Starlet Metals here that we can flash in to give a creature plus 1 plus 1, and it gets Hexproof until end of turn. Of course, it's an Aura, which will trigger our Satessan Champion to draw his cards, get counters, everything like that. We have the four Destiny Spinners here, 2-3 two, for 2 mana, which is pretty fine stats. And creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. And you can turn a land into an XX, where X is the number of enchantments you control. And Joel Royale is one of our new uh, core set cards, 1-2 two for 2 mana, legendary uh, human druid. And whenever you draw your second card, each turn create a 2-2 two, two green cat creature token. So it only counts for your second card, uh, which is a pretty good effect, but obviously it would be nuts if it was just every time you like draw your... If you, if you can make multiples of these per turn, that would be pretty uh, insane. And uh, if you do get to like kind of a board stall situation, same thing with Destiny Spinner has this activated ability. It is six mana. However, creatures uh, you can draw a base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Uh, with the Satessan Champion, if you get your engine going right, you can get a ton of cards in hand, and um, you can get you know five, six uh, base power toughness off this pretty easily. And then you have the Champion and the Kotal that have a ton of counters on them. Um, that's pretty sweet. And our Satessan training is going to help us get through for damage with our big uh, creatures. As a enchanted creature has plus one, plus zero, and trample. And of course, when answers, we get to draw a card. So that works perfectly well with everything we're trying to do. And uh, another uh, new corset card here, Rousing Reed. It's a three mana aura. <clears throat> when enters, we draw two, then discard a card. Uh, so when you get this uh, thing going, you're going to be drawing a bunch of lands. Um, so you can easily discard a land. And sometimes you have a redundant spell you don't necessarily need or have a... Uh, uh, time to play in the immediate uh, future, so you can just easily discard that. <clears throat> and what your creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. So your Satesan Champion has a million counters on it, maybe doesn't have a way to get through. Uh, your low scale Kotal, same thing, has a bunch of counters, you don't necessarily have a way to get through. They have, uh, you know, some 1 1 or small creatures, whatever, on your opponent's side. Well, you just give it trample, give it flying, and, uh, you know, you just kind of go over the top of your opponent and just kill them very, very quickly with huge creatures. And uh, with a little bit of vision with the trample and the flying. Uh, that's kind of the big game plan here. And of course, Hydra's Growth, uh, just two copies here. Uh, it is three mana to uh, to uh, to put down on one of your uh, creatures. Uh, when it enters, you get a plus one, plus one counter, and the beginning of your upkeep, uh, you double the number of plus one, plus one counters on Enchanted Creature. So this is kind of a little bit of a win more card, but it can also help you uh, close out the game very, very quickly and help you kind of go over the top if your opponent has kind of like a go-wide type strategy or something like that. Um, so they can't just throw a bunch of creatures in to kind of uh, stay alive. You're just going to get a, grow a ton of counters and just trample through or fly through for, if you have a, both this and a rousing reed on top and just uh, get through for a ton of damage here over a couple of turns. And uh, so that's all you're trying to do is just kind of get your creatures down. You know, we have some nice toughness creatures with the 1-3, uh, 
uh, the one, two, the two, three will kind of buy you some time against certain uh, aggressive decks. And of course, you have the Fogify too that can help. And uh, you're just trying to kind of stabilize long enough to get your engine going. And once you start drawing a million cards, you'll find lands, you'll find your Rs, you'll find additional creatures, and you can just go off and you'll have a ton of cards in hand. You'll have plenty of Rs to equip and just keep keep going. And so, yeah, just trying to survive to get to that point uh, is basically the game plan and go over, over the top of your opponent. And Hydra's Growth is a fantastic way to help you do that. The Nyx Herald, of course, is another way to connect, give one of your creatures trample. It's an enchantment creature as well. 2-3 body for 3 isn't anything fantastic, but just give, pump it up any of your enchantment creatures or enchanted creatures, uh, giving them plus 1, plus 1, and trample. Just an additional way to kind of put across damage and uh, get through. So, of course, all four Citizen Champions, so 1-3. Uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, you get a plus one plus one counter on the champion, and you draw a card. And the lower scale code is a 2-2 two, two for 3, and any time you draw a card, you put a plus one plus one counter on the total. So, it doesn't care. Uh, just such your regular draw step, you're going to get a counter on this, so that's pretty fantastic. And uh, so, we're pretty low on the curve here with three, mostly th 2 and 3 drops. But uh, at the top end here, we do have two 4-drops in Arasta of the Endless Web. Just a fantastic 3-5 for 4 legendary enchantment creature. With Reach, uh, you know, so it gives us a way to deal with flyers because uh, we have the Rousing Read, but not much else besides uh, that. So Arasta is another way to kind of help uh, prevent us from losing to, uh, you know, flying creatures. Uh, obviously, Azorius Flyer has got some new uh, new toys to play with. I had uh, some fun with that in the Early Access event as well. So you can see that posted, and I'll probably be revisiting, revisiting that deck at some point, kind of revising my best one, uh, my main deck, I should say, and then uh, come up with a sideboard for it. Uh, at some point, just like I will with probably all the decks that I played there, uh, kind of refine them and post sideboard, just like I'm doing for this one. Uh, and the other upside with Arasta is whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, cut a 1 2 green spider creature token. So, just kind of like a draw L helps us kind of go wide. So, we can kind of attack in with our uh, champion and our Kodal, and then we have some 1 2s, some 2 2s back on defense to kind of help block so we don't die on the uh, crackback. So, mana base, still 23 lands. We got 6 island, 8 forest, 4 breeding pools. Four Temple of Mysteries, and then a little bit of tech for the aggro matchups, uh, one Blast Zone here. Um, so mostly just against kind of a Lord of the Ground creature-based matchups, we can just hit the Blast Zone on like one or two and just wipe out on our, on our opponent's board. And, uh, you know, most of our key creatures are three drops. Uh, we do have some two drops, so we'll have to kind of be a little bit careful with uh, when we use that. But uh, just as a one-off, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty fine to uh, include here. And uh, so now the sideboard, I uh, th still think we probably need uh, some graveyard interaction, and Tormod's Crypt is a fantastic answer. It causes zero mana to cast it, and zero mana to activate it. Just come down through zero mana, and then you immediately just tap it and sacrifice it to uh, exile all cards from target players to graveyard. Of course, we'll choose our opponent. Um, so yeah, this is a fantastic graveyard uh, interaction. Um, Soul Guide Lantern, you know, can potentially draw you a card, but you don't, you're, you're playing it to, you know, exile your opponent's graveyard, so you don't really care about the card draw side of it. So something like something efficient like Tormod's Crypt is just the better option. I think we still need some uh, graveyard interaction. Uh, for other creature matchups, uh, be they aggro or bigger, we have two uh, stern dismissals to return a creature or even an enchantment an opponent controls to its owner's hand. <clears throat> so this can kind of bounce uh, maybe your opponent's uh, <clears throat> enchantment creature or enchantment and uh, kind of buy, you, buy a little bit of a uh, tempo and help you get through for damage. Maybe a enchantment removal and get your creature back, something like that. Just kind of buy you some time. Uh, two copies of Aether Gust uh, for the powerful red and green spells. You know, Gruul is still a pretty reasonable option. There's lots of good uh, uh, green spells that just came out, so definitely going to be seeing lots of mono green and green variants with Garrick and all those um, nasty creatures. So definitely need Aether Gust, and of course, Ember Cleave is still a thing. Uh, Tail's End is kind of interesting inclusion. Uh, you definitely can make a case for something like Negate, it would be kind of the safer option. Uh, this is mostly just to deal with like Planeswalkers, uh, Ugin, obviously, the 8 mana Ugin is pretty insane, and you need some way to kind of deal with that. Um, Tails End can at least help you kind of counter uh, Planeswalkers mostly, but uh, it seems like there's still enough, enough triggered and activated abilities that are relevant, but I think it's a kind of interesting tech to run at Tails End. Maybe it's too cute, maybe it's just running Negate, but um, I think Tails End could be the more interesting, interesting card when all is said and done, so we're going to run two copies of Tails End. And uh, Heroic Intervention is a fantastic course set option. You're going to be seeing this in pretty much every green deck going forward now. Uh, permanence you control again, Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. Certainly something that's main deckable. And uh, definitely something you're going to be seeing out of the sideboards as well. 
Um, you know, protection against board wipes plus the hex proof, so you're just covered either way. Two mana instant speed is not too much to ask, just a fantastic card. And here's something for the uh, aggro matchups it's a 1 4 for 3 mana. It does have reach, so again, it can help protect you against flyers. Uh, however, whenever enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 2 life. So if your opponent, you know, is kind of going wide, putting in lots of creatures and hitting you uh, fast and hard. But you can at least kind of slow them down with this four toughness, and then once you start dropping enchantments after that, you're going to be gaining two life every turn, and it's going to really frustrate your opponent. Uh, Ashox Erasure, um, for those kind of longer uh, grindier type matchups, uh, it's an enchantment, so it's going to trigger obviously with our uh, Satessan Champion and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, get to exile spell at uh, flash speed, and then your opponent ca casts spells with the same name as the exiled card. So it's kind of a way to kind of, uh, it's basically an enchantment counterspell. Um, so definitely something to, to consider against certain, certain matchups. Um, if you think you'll have time to cast this against like board wipes or planeswalkers, that's probably the most, uh, most likely time it will come in. And uh, just having an enchantment, so a little bit of synergy, but just as one of, because it is a little bit difficult to pull off in the right situations at four mana. But uh, definitely it's an interesting card. And then two copies here of Gem Razor. You need ways to deal with your, you know, your opponent's artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Seems like there's a, the Ugin decks definitely want to play like lots of uh, kind of cheeky, um, cheeky artifact creatures like Ginger Brute and Steel Overseer things like that to kind of uh, distract you and kind of chip away at damage while they kind of ramp into their Ugin. Um, there's other things like that. There's still, <clears throat> you know, plenty of good enchantments in standard that you have to worry about. Wilderness Reclamation, of course, for the uh, competitive decks, which are going to be looking to avoid for the most part because we're just playing this here in the casual queues um, but the, the nice upside of course is being able to mutate with the reach trample 4-4 is you can do this with your you know your codal your champion that have a ton of counters on them and they just become really really big and they just have the trample built into them by having the gem razor mutated onto them so yeah uh, that's the deck and we'll jump into some best of three see how we do all right up against mr g freesky i'm gonna go first sweet um, I mean, we used to have the Destiny Spinner, and then we can enchant it. So as long as they don't kill it, or we can draw into another creature, then we should be good. We have the Protection Spells, we have some card draw with the Training and the Rousing Read, so... And three lands with all of our colors. Overall, it's uh, not a terrible hand. But we'll see what we're up against. Red. Into... Okay. So probably a teamer or a mutate. And there's the champion. So we're both going to be trying to go over the top of each other. Uh, I believe they have... Um, it could be running the uh, Iluna, which has flying. No. Okay. So it looks like Boros so far. That's uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll just attack for two. Get our champion down and uh, we'll just kind of go off from there. So obviously Frogify isn't great when they have a bunch of counters on their end. Oh, Mardi Mute. Okay, now we're now we're getting somewhere. Uh, so it's Snap Deck, so they're probably not going to have uh, too much with flying. So Master Liger, you know, they haven't really applied any pressure or have any other creatures out, so... Uh, yeah, you can hit me for four, no problem. Okay, do we turn that? into a base 1-1 one -one that has a counter on it. Because it's not terrible. And then just hold up Starlet Mantle since they're in Mardi Colors, they're probably going to have some removal. Seems fair. And uh, next turn we can just go off with Rousing Reed and Training if we want. But yeah, Mardi, uh, plenty of, plenty of uh, removal on their side potentially. No three, uh, no, th no uh, three mana plays here. That's interesting. Um, don't think we want double frogify. Let's go for the rousing read first. Yeah, that resolved immediately. So they don't seem to have any effects on their end. Uh, we can probably ditch the temple. Uh, we could be greedy here in training, but uh, I think we just still want to hold up the. Mantle. Just play a little, a little bit safe. 
because obviously Mardi Colors have tons of removal typically, although in a Mutate deck, I'm not sure how much removal they're actually running. And uh, yeah, I'm guessing they were just holding up a bunch of four drops and uh, couldn't get there. Okay, so against Mardu. Alright, probably want these stern dismissals to kind of uh, slow them down a little bit. Probably not running uh, shamans we have to worry about. Probably not worry about their graveyard. Uh, Erasure maybe could be interesting since they're uh, pretty firmly in the mid range territory, trying to mutate it. Lots of four and five mana plays. I guess the Tails End could kind of counter some of their triggered abilities, could counter their snap decks. Seems pretty limited though. Uh, we'll bring in the Erasure, why not? Leave one Rasta in, so we still have two, uh, two enchantments here. Um, so we got the Stern Dismissals, so maybe Frogify <coughs> can come out, or maybe Hydra's Growth is just too, uh, just too greedy. Well, we do need to go over the top of them, but the Rousing Reed kind of uh, worked quite well there. Uh, if they do have removal, then obviously the Hydra's Growth is not as good. But, yeah, I don't think these Mutate decks run a ton of removal, typically. I mean, obviously, uh, Mardu, they have uh, things like Batra, so that's pretty uh, that's pretty nasty. Okay, so we have the Jor-El, and we have the Protection. So if we draw a third land, uh, then we're great. Okay, turn one egg again. Okay, so we need a third land so we can get to the Rousing Reed, and then we can discard the second jor -El. It's pretty reasonable. A pretty fantastic start from our opponent this time. Egg into Druid, and now they can start mutating. And so they're actually in, what, four color mutate? Wow. So we saw only the Mardu colors last time, and now we see that they're in green as well. So that's, uh, that's a pretty greedy list. Mardu can be hard enough to pull off in like a... Uh, like two and three colors. I guess two colors is pretty reasonable, but three colors can be tricky enough as it is, and then doing four colors, that's uh, asking a lot. Okay, so not grabbing a red source this time, going for whites. So they must have, uh, uh, what, cub wardens and things like that. I mean, we could go for the rousing reed, but it doesn't feel great. We probably just need to hold up the uh, stern dismissal. This might as well do it now. Doing it in response to uh, mutating doesn't really seem like it does a whole lot. I, mean, I guess we could attack for one. They're going to hit us for the Paradise Druid, which is fine. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, Champion would be pretty awesome right here. Okay, so they had a Red Source in hand, it looks like. So I can still mutate onto it, but it can't tap for mana. So they just play out the Greyhorn as a 3-4 and attack for a 1. That seems fine. Codal is pretty good. I think we just uh, drop that and hope we can survive a couple more turns here. Basically just need to survive until we can kind of go over the top. That's, uh, that's the uh, name of the game with this list. So we have the Rousing Reed, we'll probably drop that on the Kotal. Discarding... Uh... Okay, well, we're going to discard the Draw Royale anyway, so we'll do that now and see what they got. Uh, we could chump block, but we can make some uh, creatures next turn. Uh, there's the champion, but it's probably a little bit late with the 5-5 five, five, and 3-4 on the board. Um, I think we just go for Rousing Raid, and we've seen no removal from them, so maybe we just discard a... well, we found two, so we'll discard one of those. So we get a 6-6 six, six Flyer now. Putting the pressure on them, which will go to 7 next turn. So I think we just drop the Champion, hope for a land, and then we can potentially Starlit Mantle just to draw some cards and get some more counters. 
since uh, we've seen zero removal from our opponent so far. But they still have a pretty solid board state. We're down to 12. Uh, yeah, we'll just chump... Uh, oh, that has Menace. Um, take... I guess we'll try like that. Take 5, down to 7. It's a little sketchy, but... Alright, second uh, draw rail. Alright, put them on a one turn clock. Uh, if they got two counters here, then we're in bad shape. Uh, we can chump block here and block here. Take five, go down to two. So it's close. We need to survive. Okay, is that going to be a six uh, powered flyer? And get us to one unless they have some uh, other effect here. Maybe the running shock. That'd be kind of weird in the four color mutate list. Oh, they have the removal. Say what? Does this. It's not summon sick. They played it last turn, right? I'm so confused. Okay, so looks like our opponent uh, was just... We were able to put enough pressure on them with the Coldwell that I think they just got a little bit defensive and didn't um, and uh, didn't realize they had lethal there, especially with the removal spell. You think they would have seen it, but hey, we'll take it. Okay, up against Lord Marduk. Rocking the new uh, Ugin avatar. Not a big fan of that avatar. Looks a little weird. I mean, obviously, Ugin, the card itself, is uh, stupidly powerful, especially with all the ramp we have in standard, as others have noted. But uh, it is what it is. I'm sure it'll see a ton of play in a few weeks, and it'll uh, probably rise to the top of standard. People will start calling for it to be banned, and wizards will wait until... Uh, uh, you know, they've sold enough uh, packs and whatnot, and then maybe a month later they'll finally uh, ban it out of standard. Uh, historic, I'm not too sure uh, if it needs to be that same treatment there. Okay, so this could be cats, it could be life gain. Uh, we'll scry, we have three lands. I don't think we necessarily need four, probably just looking for more auras. Uh, right now, we're probably just going to go uh, Champion into Hydra's Growth. I just hope that's enough to kind of go over the top. Blue, white. Hmm. I mean, we could get down the Draw Royale just to kind of slow them down. They could have a counter spell here. And if we draw a third land naturally, then we're okay. But that's probably not the best play. I think we'll keep a fourth land at this point. So our opponent's just holding up counter spells, it looks like. So maybe we should have just played the Joy all last turn. Um, Destiny Spinner would have been pretty nice. Okay, they have a counter spell, looks like. Essence Scatter. So Charm Stray and Counter Spell is your game plan. That's that's pretty amazing. Luris, okay. Just uh, play a couple two drops here. See what we can draw into. Uh, they don't have flying, so there's no reason to rush out the Arasa. We're probably just going for training, hold up mantle. Although, in the Zorius colors, I'm not really too sure we have to worry about that. Uh, the life gain sucks, but I think we can overcome that. Uh, another land would have been nice. Uh, probably just go for training, just to hopefully dig for a third land, then we can drop the Kotal. Obviously, having a land there, dropping Kotal, and then doing training would have been better. Uh, yeah, Destiny Spinner, you can't counter that, so if you're just holding up counters, that's not going to work. Cool. Right. Opponent uh, is not good at reading, which is kind of par for the course for a lot of new players. They don't necessarily know how things work, so they just kind of fire stuff off. 
Uh, we're 14, they're at 22, they have life gain. We have the 2-2 that can block. The Lurus will happily make that trade if they want to force the issue. But yeah, they see through it and decide it's not worth it. Um, I think we just give our uh, Codal fly. They can't counter it. They could have some bounce effect here in Azorius Colors, though. I uh, don't need second draw rail, so we can easily discard that. Make another 2-2. Two -two. It's tempting to run out the Hydra's growth, but uh, I think we just need to hold up the mantle. Well, we'll go ahead and swing both of these guys. If they want to try to block the Lurus on the spinner, we can mantle. If they're just mostly counter spells and uh, like a Lurus cat deck, mono like mono white cats with counter spells, uh, we have trample, but okay. I mean, they can cast it again, so I guess they uh, prevent one, gain one, so they only take one in a day, and they just get to recast it next turn. So it's not terrible for them. But we do need to protect our protect our coral, especially with all these counters on it. So in this case, they do have some kind of a uh, bounce effect. I think it's worth holding on to Mantle. Although so far they're not indicating that's what their game plan is about. Uh, it's tempting to get down to the second Koto. We also could play, should play around like Shatters and uh, uh, Time Wipes. So we'll, uh, we'll keep a couple creatures back just to rebuild in case they are able to uh, wipe us out. So I think we just uh, just attack eight. Let's not give him the option to block with the charm strain. And their net loss is one, but we're gonna get a ton of counters in this next turn. And we have protection, so if they have some way to bounce it, so all we have to do is dodge a, um, a board wipe, shatter, or. Uh, Land into time wipe and we're good. Okay, so our opponent, uh, kind of a weird deck. I mean, if they were more in on creatures, we could bring in the Tormod scripts. So we're not to worry about the Lurus shenanigans. But uh, they don't seem like they're about that. Uh, we didn't see board wipes, but we have to assume that's what they're running. <clears throat> so maybe we shave off the target removal protection for something that gives us indestructible as well as hexproof. So let's bring in those two. And what else do we want to shave off? Maybe set third Jorail. Still probably want the Frogifies to deal with like a Luris or any other bigger creatures or cats that might be running. So obviously Tail Zen doesn't counter their effects unless it's a legendary so if they're running planeswalkers but we, which we did not see uh, maybe the ashox erasure just take away some counters or board wipes from them well we'll give that some play we didn't see any, any enchantments from them so we'll leave out gem razor for now and don't think we need stern dismissal so we'll try it like that this is a case where maybe uh, negate would be better than tails end so uh, we'll see. Okay, we can temple, look for a land, play Destiny Spinner on two, and if we can't find land, we still have a Destiny Spinner to follow it up with. And if we do find land, we have some three drops, so... Blue Source isn't amazing, but it is land. And nice thing about our deck, it is very flexible on the... Uh, which spells we need to cast. So we don't have a lot of uh, double blue, double green spells. It's very easy, you know, single single color type uh, type of spells. Okay, so they do have the Gateway Plaza, which gives them what mana of any color. Yeah. So we'll attack two first. Destiny Spinner says we can't be countered though. So if that's what they're holding up, Gideon's Triumph. Sure. We'll play uh, Champion while they're. Uh, Defenses are down. 
I uh, like to get this Kotal down, but with the way they're running these counter spells, Spinner might just be the better play. They are, uh, they are tapped out. We could get the, um, I guess the Nyx Herald down. It would trigger, draw us a card. We do need to find some more lands here, so I think it's worth uh, destroying the card. The Destiny Spinner would have been the safer play. Obviously, Frogify doesn't line up too well with the Pride Mate. So, no R's on the champion, so we can't uh, buff that up yet. But we do have a couple, uh, couple more uh, options next turn to potentially draw some cards. Okay, Light of Hope, that was a good one against us, sure. Opponents uh, not afraid. They're going aggressive. Okay, so they do have mana open to counter. So we just drop the Kotal. So probably gets Essence scattered. We have a second one. Mystical. I mean, we're in blue, so I guess it kind of makes sense. But we have Destiny Spinner, and we're mostly green-based. Seems a little... Now we can definitely frogify that. Let's see if we can find an untapped land here. Nope, just temples. I don't think we want Joel Rail at this point. Uh, I'll probably just leave it back as a blocker here. <clears throat> So it does have the two counters already, but it lost all all abilities, so it can't continue gaining uh, counters. Um, they could have a Gideon's or something, but I think we still block. So lots of weird cards from our opponent. Alright, I think we just got our Destiny Spinner down, or have it get countered. Cancel. That's a... That's a counter spell. Sure. It will help us get through for damage, so I guess we'll keep it. And we'll just hold up the Starlit Mantle for now. <clears throat> We're running them out of cards, which is good. Fave wishes. Okay, you can get like a, a disenchant. Okay. Oh, Frogfy is indestructible. So, thanks. Give me a use for that. So let's hold up the Starlet Mantle. And then we can rouse and read next turn to get the most uh, value. So we can turn their Fave Wish into a 1 1 with uh, no ability, so it doesn't have flying, and we can rouse and read to get a huge flyer going. That seems pretty good. Ashiox Erasure. It was a little greedy to try to hold that up at this point. I have one card in hand. We'll see what kind of a counter spell it is. We'll try the creature, I guess. It's the safest bet to trigger our uh, counters and card draw. attack with the champion. 
have five power total on board, so they could uh, could double block the Kotal. They're just going to chump block with their 1-1. One, one. They could still have the Gideon's Sacrifice, which would suck. But we do need to we do need to fight back here. Lurus, but uh, they have nothing in their graveyard. Attack one in the air, sure. Sounds pretty aggressive there. Uh, yeah, pass the turn. Another champion. Well, we're a little bit stuck on land, so it's a little bit, a uh, little bit annoying. Well, let's go for the uh, rousing read. But we discard the herald. Oh, no land still. <clears throat> we need to go off here. Okay, and our opponent has seen enough. Uh, definitely not over, but um, was, uh, the advantage was definitely swinging in our favor. And if they weren't running, running board wipes, maybe, for some reason, then, uh, yeah, not much they could do. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's a, the updated version, uh, the best of three version for the Simic Enchantment uh, Creature Draw. Uh, things like Joe Royale and Lower Scale Kotal, there's definitely um, lots of directions you can go. Um, I think Simic is probably the simplest way with the Statesman Champion um, engine, but um, could uh, could be something to revisit. I don't know if you guys have any other ideas, uh, You know, maybe, maybe like a Bant version with uh, some of the white. Uh, spells, but I'm not sure how consistent that would be, especially without uh, those the Bant Triumphs, since we never got those. Um, but could be something to revisit later on in the uh, season, and uh, maybe even historic as well. Just seems like it's a ton of fun to play. Um, so yeah, I was definitely uh, happy to feature this again. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's really too much I would change. I mean, the sideboard, obviously. Uh, maybe Ashox Erasure doesn't belong. Maybe Tails End should be Negate. Um, everything else feels like it's uh, feels pretty reasonable, you know. We need graveyard interaction. I think there's still some uh, uh, Luris. Uh, I think cycling is still a thing. I'm not really sure. Um, need still need ways to deal with your opponent's creatures. So it's like a stern dismissal, since uh, you know Simic doesn't really have great uh, answers. Um, just even some tempo. Ether Gust is just continues to be an outstanding sideboard card. Um, but maybe the Tails End is a little bit cute. You need ways to deal with Planeswalkers. Uh, so it's mostly in here for that, especially a uh, new Teferi, new Ugin. Um, so maybe Negate is just a better answer. But we do have things like Heroic Intervention that protect us from board wipes in that regard. Um, but yeah, Nexus Warden seems like it's pretty solid. The four toughness and the life gain can help you out with a lot of the life gain decks. Or excuse me, the aggro decks to help you gain life. And of course, uh, Gem Razor with uh, all the counters that are already existing on your creatures to destroy artifacts or enchantments. Um, so yeah. If there's any changes you would make to this list or any variations you want to see, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, make sure you jank with a perk.